Merry Christmas, everybody, and welcome to our digital Christmas experience. Thanks for having us in your home over the next 30 to 40 minutes, and we're going to bring you into our home uh, as we celebrate Christmas together. You know, throughout history, thousands of babies have grown up to be kings, but history changed just over 2,000 years ago when one king became a baby, and that's the Christmas story, the king of the cosmos becoming the baby of Bethlehem, the star breather who became our sin bearer, God wrapping himself in humanity to become one of us so that he could save all of us. And that fact deserves our full attention and our total devotion. So we're going to spend some time worshiping together and working our way through the Christmas story in Matthew 1 and Luke 2. So grab some hot chocolate or some eggnog or whatever your holiday drink of choice is and let's do Christmas together. Hey everybody, welcome to the Spradling home and to our uh, Netflix fireplace. Uh, this is my favorite movie on Netflix right now. We, uh, we built this home 18 years ago and we opted for the upgraded master bath over the fireplace, which is one of the biggest regrets of my adult life. Uh, the jacuzzi bathtub is a glorified dirty clothes hamper. Uh, but thanks to Netflix, now we have a fireplace and we don't even have to worry about catching the stockings on fire. So, I mean, you almost can't even tell it's a TV, right? Almost. Hey, when our kids were, uh, were seven and five, we took them to Disney World and we were excited about the trip and we had our kids watch several classic Disney movies to prepare them for the experience of a lifetime. And I had high expectations about how this trip would go. I mean, Disney is the happiest place on earth, right? Well, maybe, uh, but not for us. And uh, not in the middle of July when it's 107 degrees and not when all of Europe is on vacation at the same time and descends on the Magic Kingdom, and not when getting run over by a mob while racing to get a fast pass for Space Mountain. Uh, we were there for a week, and I was done after day two. And the same was true of my boys. 
Uh, other than a few rides, they were less than thrilled with what the Magic Kingdom had to offer. Uh, they were expecting roller coasters and they got Dumbo. Uh, our expectations did not match our experience and, and, and maybe our expectations were just too high, but our anticipation was interrupted by reality. Now, uh, some of you actually majored in Disney and you can navigate the parks like a ninja. So if you wanna show us how it's done, I'm willing to try it again. And uh, plus my boys are now 18 and almost 16, so I don't have to push them or carry them through the parks. Uh, but I can't promise I won't have to be, okay? But disappointment with Disney is one thing. When it, well, when it comes to life, that's a different story. And I bet you've had some life experiences that fell short of your expectations. And the gap in between is called a disruption. A disruption is when something goes differently than you planned. Uh, you expected a great senior year of high school or college, but your experience is a mask and social distancing and limited events. I have a senior right now. Uh, you expected a job you love, but your experience is a job you don't. You expected health, but your experience is a chronic illness. You expected kids, but your experience is infertility. You expected happily ever after, but your experience is a broken marriage. Life has been disrupted. Uh, dreams have turned to disappointments and, and you find yourself living in, in the gap between your expectations and your experience. And 2020 has been that way for all of us. Nothing has gone the way we thought it would go this year. Uh, we, we turned the page to a new decade on January 1st, and two months later we found ourselves wanting to close the book altogether. Like 2020 has been one giant disruption, one experience after another falling short of our expectations. But you know, about 2,020 years ago, give or take, it was the same story. Different circumstances, but the same kind of disruption. Two teenagers were planning a wedding. They were full of excitement and anticipation of what married life would be like. They, they had dreams of a good job, a normal life, and lots of kids. And then an angel showed up, showed up with a disruption. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Well, it wasn't a global pandemic, but it was a personal predicament. I mean, who would, who would believe this story? Mary is carrying the Messiah and an angel told you this? Who's going to believe that? I mean, you just tell one of your friends that an angel showed up to you with a message and see how that goes. It was a lot to take in and nearly impossible to explain. They expected a big wedding with lots of family and friends, but that's not what they experienced. Disruption. Uh, they made a home for themselves in a town called Nazareth, and Joseph was a carpenter, barely making ends meet. But they were doing their best to honor God, and they were preparing a place for their newborn, who by now could come any day. And then they got some news from the Roman emperor, or as they called him, Caesar Augustus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. 
this wasn't a quick trip from Liberty Township to Fairfield. This was a 90 mile trip on foot. Uh, maybe Mary rode a donkey, we don't know, but listen, at nine months pregnant, there was no way to make this a pleasant trip. Disruption. And while they were there, she went into labor. Now when that happened with our first baby, I drove like a madman to the hospital and they ushered us into a room with a nice bed and a TV and they came in every 10 minutes to check on us. And a few hours later, our parents arrived. So we had our family with us. We were comfortable, or at least I was. I, I'm not sure about Janelle. But Joseph didn't book a room on Hotel.com in advance. So there was nothing available except a cave around the corner where the animals were kept. I don't think that's what they expected, but that's what they experienced. Disruption. And just on the outskirts of Bethlehem, there was a group of shepherds doing the night watch. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Shepherds weren't fond of disruptions. Uh, they were charged with watching sheep sleep. Now, when we can't sleep, we count sheep. They stayed awake, counting sheep. A disruption was no good in their world. It usually meant a wolf or a mountain lion was looking for a meal, or it meant that a sheep had wandered off. The best report they could give to their supervisor the next day was that nothing happened. There were no disruptions. A quiet night was a good night for a shepherd, but this night would be anything but quiet. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. It's what happens when we're disrupted. We're terrified. When our experience doesn't match our expectation, it often causes fear. It's unsettling, it's unnerving, and, and we're not quite sure how to respond or what to do. Kind of sounds like 2020, doesn't it? We're afraid of a virus we know very little about. We're afraid of a vaccine that's been created in less than a year. We're afraid of losing our job. We're afraid of losing our retirement. We're afraid of losing someone we love. We didn't expect a global pandemic. We didn't expect an economic disaster. We didn't expect to have to keep our distance from our friends and our family. But this is what we're all experiencing, a disruption. And here's what you need. Here's what I need. Here's what we all need. In the middle of the disruption, we just need somebody to show up and say, it's going to be okay. We need somebody to step in and bring us some good news. And this is what happened to the shepherds. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Peace. It's God's remedy to disruption. And you can't get peace anywhere else. You can't buy it. You can't drink it. You can't make it. You can't earn it. It's a gift from God to those on whom His favor rests. And the good news that will cause great joy is this. His favor rests on you. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. COVID may be the biggest disruption of our lifetime, but it's not the only disruption. I mean, disruptions have been part of people's stories literally since the beginning of time. Just, just go back and read the first three chapters of Genesis. Life is one giant disruption, one expectation after the next, being shattered by reality, but, but woven in between what we expect and what we experience is a message lying in a manger. Like Jesus is a message of good news. He's a message of peace, a message that God's favor rests on you even in the middle of your disappointment, a message of God's extravagant love. The Christmas story is a story about God stepping into the middle of our disruptions to show us His compassion, to show us His love, to show us His grace, to show us His favor. And the good news isn't that God gives us peace. The good news is that God gives us His presence. And it's His presence that brings peace. And that's why Jesus came, to be one of us so that He could be with us so that we could have peace. Without Jesus, life is a disruption with no redemption. But Christmas is a reminder that we aren't without Christ. 
that He is with us. It's a reminder that God's favor rests on us and that His peace reaches in us. Whether it's COVID or cancer, death or divorce, addiction or anxiety, life is a battle. And it's been that way since the fall of mankind. Experiences constantly falling short of expectations. And so God disrupted our world with a baby so that He could redeem our disruptions. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. There was chaos in the fields outside Bethlehem that night. That's what happens when angels show up. And I don't know what the shepherds expected when they got to the stable, but what they experienced was the peace of a sleeping baby. And I, I know, I know that Bethlehem and a stable weren't what Joseph and Mary expected. But Jesus had arrived. And that's all that matters. You know, there's, there's really nothing more peaceful than a sleeping baby. And sleeping babies have a way of silencing everything. Like you talk quieter, you walk softer, you hear things you'd, you'd otherwise never notice, like the ticking of a clock or the crackling of a fake fireplace, the inhaling and exhaling of our lungs. It just oozes peace. It's almost like God did that on purpose. Like the best way to show us His peace was to come as a baby. So let's let that peace soak in for a minute as we sing one of our all-time favorite songs.
Well, I hope you can feel the peace. I don't know what kind of mess you're dealing with or what kind of chaos COVID has dropped on you. I don't know what's been disrupted in your world. But what I do know is that Jesus is here. And that's all that matters. And our, our goal at Centerpoint is to help you find and follow Jesus because we believe that everything changed when he stepped into this world nearly 2,000 years ago and that he can change everything when he steps into yours. And if you want to know more about what it means to follow Jesus, we'd love to have that conversation with you. Just text the word decision to the number on the screen and someone from our team will reach out to you soon. Hey, thanks for spending part of your Christmas with us. And from all of us at Centerpoint, we want to say from our homes to yours. Merry Christmas, Centerpoint. 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 Merry Christmas. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas, Centerpoint family. Merry Christmas, Centerpoint. 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 We love you. Merry Christmas, Centerpoint. Merry Christmas to you and your entire family. Merry Christmas, Centerpoint. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Centerpoint. A very happy new year.